Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another recent reads wrap up. If you didn't see my first recent reads wrap up, I will link that video down below, but I'm essentially trying a new format where I read about five to six books and come on here and talk about them in a wrap up style with you all. And then I will also show the next five books on my TBR at the end of this video. A lot of you really liked this format. Thank you so much for your feedback. I really appreciate it. So I'm going to keep doing it uh, until it doesn't work for me anymore. So I have five books. I have these five to talk to you about today. Uh, I'm very excited about some of them, and some of them are a little bit disappointing. So let's go in the order of my least favorite to my favorite. All right, my least favorite of this wrap up is The Stranger in the Mirror by Liv Constantine. So this one I gave three stars, and I read The Last Mrs. Parrish by this author, and that is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. I loved that book so much. It genuinely shocked me about halfway through. I couldn't believe the direction it took. And so I've been wanting to check out more books by this author duo ever since. So I picked up their latest book and it just didn't have that same magic that the first one did. It didn't have that same shock factor. Honestly, the twist I could see a mile away. This one follows a woman named Addison who's about to get married, but she has amnesia and can't remember the majority of her life. She can only remember kind of the past two years since she met her husband-to-be. And so Addison is trying to kind of un uncover uh, her lost memories, but at the same time, she's kind of hesitant to because she doesn't know if those memories are happy memories and she doesn't know if she wants to have the life that she used to have. But then you're also following a man named Julian who is looking for his lost wife. This one just didn't do much for me. It was a very slow mystery. It wasn't very thrilling. The characters, none of them really stood out in any way. I wasn't necessarily rooting for them. I didn't feel much towards them and the twist is just so obvious in this book. Like, I am not good at guessing twists in mystery and thriller books, but this one was just, like, I wasn't even sure if it was supposed to be a twist or if it was kind of just like, yes, like, we're, we expect the reader to know these things, but it's more about, like, the journey, how we got there is what's interesting. And so it just, it, it wasn't an interesting journey. I wasn't even sure if the twist was meant to be a twist, and I just didn't love the characters. So this one just really didn't do much for me. I was engaged while I was reading it. Like I, I was listening to the audiobook and definitely wanted to see, you know, if my guesses were right and kind of the journey, how we got there and all of that. But there wasn't a whole lot of payoff um, for all of those revelations. I, I gave it three stars. Honestly, that might be a little bit generous. I might bump that down to like 2.5 because I just did not feel a whole lot for this book. So I'm very disappointed because I loved the first book I read from this author duo. So. We'll see if I pick up any more uh, Liv Constantine. Their other two books that are out right now um, don't necessarily intrigue me. So I might wait to see if they come out with anything else that seems to pique my interest. But right now I'm, I'm pretty bummed because unfortunately Liv Constantine is not going to be an auto buy author for me. Okay, the second disappointment is probably going to make my most disappointing books of the year video. And it's not because it was bad or anything. It was just, well, let me show you the book and, and we'll talk about why. Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse. I loved the first book, Black Sun. When I read that book, it immediately made my favorite fantasy books of all time list. And I was really hoping for an amazing sequel that was just as good as the first. The ending of the first one was very abrupt. Um, in a lot of ways, it wasn't the most satisfying ending, but I trusted Rebecca Roanhorse to kind of address it in the second book. And here's, here's the problem. The whole first half of the book was only there to address the ending of the first book. Like the way the first book ended was so abrupt and we really didn't get much explanation, much closure from it. And in a way, that was really intriguing. It was like, um, very like, oh my God, I need the second book right away. But it also made it where we had to address it for a very long time in the second book. So it, it didn't 
move forward for a really long time. The majority of this book was like looking backwards at the end of the first book. And I wasn't a huge fan of that because I, I wanted the story to progress forward. And it felt like we sp just spent so much time looking backwards. And while like, I think some of it was necessary, right? Because we didn't get a whole lot from the ending in the first book, I didn't know that, I, I wish we had gotten some of that in the first book where the, the second book didn't have to be addressing the ending for that long. It just like dragged on so long. When we did finally get past that, there wasn't a whole lot that happened. It was very like dialogue heavy. Like the action was just like conversations between two characters that you didn't care about. Like there were characters in this book that we were following their perspective that we didn't follow in the first book and I didn't care. I didn't care about those characters at all. We did not get a, enough of the characters that I loved from the first book. I feel like we just didn't get enough time with them in this one because we were following like these other characters that I just didn't care about. So there were so many conversations happening and like that was like, the action. I guess the action was just like them talking in a room about what they were gonna be doing instead of actually doing the thing. It was so frustrating. It was so frustrating. It was so disappointing because the first book was not like that at all. It was like, go, go, go. And the pacing was incredible. And I, I loved it. And I loved the characters. And this one, I just, I couldn't care less. And it almost like ruined some of the characters that I loved from the first book. Did save this book for me was the ending. I did think that the ending was quite strong. It was like the last 50 pages were really good. But like the majority of the book, I found myself really bored and I'm so disappointed. I'm so sad to say that. The world building and the magic and that sort of thing is still really cool in this world. And I still love that part of this series so much that I like feel like I couldn't give this like a bad rating because I still love the world that we're in. And I do love some of the characters that we have in this book. And one of them in particular gets a lot more interesting than they were in the first book. So I gave this 3.5 stars because for the first half of it, I was not enjoying my reading experience at all. But I will say the second half kind of redeemed it for me. I think by the time this video goes up, it will be out now. And I'm really curious to see how people receive this book because I'm wondering if, if I'm gonna be in the minority being disappointed by it and a lot of people are gonna love it or I'm, I'm wondering how it's gonna be received. So you have to let me know. Like when you read this book, please tell me what you thought of it because I'm so curious to know what your thoughts are. I, I did not dislike it. It just, again, it just because the first book was such a favorite of mine, that's why this was so disappointing. So yeah, that's Fevered Star. Let me know what you think of it when you read it. All right, now on to some awesome books that I loved. The rest of these books I loved, and I'm so happy because I feel like the first half of this month was a lot of like disappointing or very like mediocre reads, and these three totally changed that for me. I am so excited to talk to you about this. So let's see, which one should I start with? The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I gave this 4.5 stars. I loved it. I also loved The Sundown Motel by this author, and I, ooh, it's hard to say which one I like more because this one was so, so good. If you like paranormal mystery thrillers and like emphasis on the paranormal, like not teasing paranormal and then like not including paranormal stuff, but like actual paranormal stuff going on, this is such a good book for you. This follows a woman named Shay who in 2017 is a, a blogger and runs this website called The Book of Cold Cases where she is obsessed with unsolved murders. And she comes upon an opportunity to interview an accused murderer from the 70s um, in her town, who's like one of the most famous unsolved cases of all time who was at the center of one of the most famous unsolved cases and unsolved murders of all time. Also get the timeline in the 70s where you're following Beth, who was the accused and kind of her background and all of that. And 
Simone St. James always does this where she takes two timelines and she so expertly weaves them together in a way where they both build up in intensity at the same time and you're just Oh, it's so good how it all comes together. I love the way she tells her stories with these two timelines. I loved, loved about this book that makes it stand out from like all the other thrillers is how creepy it got. There were some genuinely scary moments in this book where I had like goosebumps and like my spine was tingling. It was so creepy. I had to like stop reading it at night sometimes. There were really good moments in this book that I loved. I love the atmosphere and just, oh, it's so good. So I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything, but if you love paranormal thrillers, you have to give this a try. It was fantastic. It definitely lived up to my expectations. It's not like an all-time favorite, which is why I can't give it like the full five stars. Can't totally pinpoint why. I did really feel invested in like the characters and I really liked Shay and her story. We got a lot of her like background and stuff and I really liked her as a character. I was very much like rooting for her, but for some reason this didn't quite feel like five stars to me but it was still so good. I loved it. So highly, highly recommend this one. If you've loved Simone St. James's other books, I think you're not going to be disappointed at all with these books. And this is also a great place to start with this author. So definitely go check it out. It's fantastic. Okay, I'm back. So I had to run and do something really quick and I am back now. So let's talk about the last two books I have in this wrap up. The other 4.5 star book that I have that I ended up really loving was The Passengers by John Mars. This one blew me away. I listened to the audiobook and highly, highly recommend the audiobook because this book has quite a big cast of characters and every character in the audiobook is narrated by a different person. So it was very immersive. It even had like little sound effects and stuff that was really fun. It was just an awesome, awesome experience getting through this book. And if you enjoy the TV show Black Mirror, I cannot recommend this book enough. This one in particular is Near Future and it's like a sci-fi thriller, but it's much more emphasis on the thriller where you have a future in London where self-driving cars have now kind of taken over the roads. And at the very beginning of the novel, there are eight characters who their self-driving car gets hijacked by an unknown person and they are told that in a couple of hours, they will most likely be dead. And then you're also following a perspective of a character who is a part of this jury of people who are in charge of determining whether or not self-driving car accidents are at the fault of the technology behind the self-driving car or the person on the other side of it. And it's just fascinating because this jury of people is in charge of figuring out how to save these characters and they are in charge of choosing which character to save versus which characters should die. And it is just a thrill ride from page one. I could not stop listening to this book. The characters that you encounter, like even the ones you don't get a whole lot of time with, like I just felt so much for and I ended up really, really enjoying all of the character work in this book. Like there were some characters that you absolutely love, some characters that you absolutely hate. And I just found myself very invested in all of these characters and what was going to happen to them. And I called one of the twists at the end, but there was another one that I was like, when it happened, I audibly gasped while listening to the audiobook. Fantastic. It was so, so much fun. It got super like dark and at times like really sad, but then I just like couldn't stop listening. I can totally see this becoming a TV show and being like a fantastic TV show to binge. It was so good. So highly recommend. Oh my goodness. I definitely can't wait to check out more John Mars. Last book I have, and my favorite of this wrap up is Age of Legend by Michael J. Sullivan. This book I gave five stars. I feel like at this point in the series, this is book four of the Legends of the First Empire series. I feel like I'm not gonna give a book less than five stars because even though like this one, I feel like uh, the plot itself maybe wasn't as strong as like the previous book, it still has the same characters that I love, the same writing style that I love, and there's just so many moments 
in each of these books that are so amazing and epic and just awesome. Like, I just, I love it. This one in particular, there is a time jump. So you start kind of right after book three, and then you kind of jump in time um, to some point in the future, and you're following your characters from there. So I thought that the time jump, I was very nervous about it because like that moment in time that you're in, in the third book is so compelling. And I was just like, how is he gonna, how is he gonna pull this off with this time hop? Loved it. I loved it. He totally executed it to perfection. It made sense why we kind of had to hop in time. The mythology that's kind of introduced in this book is super intriguing. We, like we get a lot of teases to questions that are probably going to be answered very soon and that's really exciting. And this book has the biggest cliffhanger that I've read in recent history. Like biggest cliffhanger. I, <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not just like immediately diving into Age of Death. Um, I, I probably will have to pick it up very, very soon, but just fantastic. Again, I love the characters. There were some characters that were a lot more of like the main focus in previous books that weren't in this book quite as much, and I was nervous about that too. I would think to myself like, I kind of miss following this one character, but then I'd be like, well, I, I love these other characters too. So it didn't even matter. I have nothing negative to say. I just, <laughs> I think this is fantastic fantasy, just like classic feeling epic fantasy at its finest in my opinion. So I highly, obviously highly recommend this series. I can't wait to pick up Age of Death. I'm so nervous, but I'm so excited. I just, Michael J. Sullivan, he breaks my heart in every book, in every book he breaks my heart. And there was one line in this book that got so emotional. It's so good. It's such a good series. So yes, five stars, obviously highly recommend. All right, so those are my most recent reads. Now let's talk about the books that I plan on picking up next. So the way I do this is I'm going to tell you five books that are on my TBR for the next recent reads wrap up. And I'm thinking that very soon I'm going to start incorporating the roll the dice game with this part of the video. Um, but I have some April books from my April TBR that I haven't gotten through yet. So I kind of want to prioritize those before I start randomizing it again. Um, but you can expect roll the dice will be a part of this in the future. So the next five books that I'm going to be picking up, let's talk about some I'm in the middle of right now. I am right in the middle of Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I'm currently listening to the audiobook for this one. So I'm going to save my thoughts for my recent reads wrap up, but I was so interested in picking this one up. It is a very, very popular romance read. And I know this whole trilogy of books where you follow each of the different Brown sisters. I know this whole trilogy is so popular. Uh, I also just started The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. So this is one that was on the April TBR that I had rolled for. This is one of those series that I definitely planned on starting this year. So very excited to finally be picking this up. YA fantasy, a little bit older, but so many people love this series. So just wanted to check out what all the hype was about. Uh, I, I'm not far enough into it yet though to have really any thoughts, but I know that this one's probably going to be featured in the next recent reads wrap up. And then the next three books haven't started yet, but I plan on getting to uh, audiobook for The Paper Palace. Actually, instead of The Paper Palace, I'm going to be reading Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim because that audiobook just came in. I'm actually in the mood for it, so that will be my next pick for this TBR. And then the next two books I'm gonna physically read um, are The Night Masquerade by Nettie Okorafor, which will wrap up the Binti trilogy for me, which I've been really enjoying so far. I gave both previous books four stars. I think that they're really, really good, um, very engaging. Uh, the writing style's really easy to follow, but packs like so much culture and world building into it. And then I, I can't let too much time pass because I'm just rearing to get to it. Age of Death by Michael J. Sullivan. That'll be the one I read after I finish Demon King and Night Masquerade. I just have to get back into it. That fourth book left off on way too much of a cliffhanger. I am so excited. I'm so excited. 
<laughs> so those are the next five books I plan on reading. What do you think of this TBR? And what did you think of the books that I've read? Have you read any? What did you think of them? Leave those comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Thank you.